Sixties child. Do you, Do you remember? remember? Still, it's nothing to be frightened of, is it? Well, not really. Well, we've got nothing to be frightened of. But, of course, some animals have. Little mice and voles and shrews. They need to be very frightened and very careful when they hear a hoot from an owl because they know there's trouble about. But, you know, I think it's rather nice of the owl to hoot, don't you, to let us know that he's about. Nevertheless, it is a bit spooky sometimes at night, especially when you're in a place like Dudley Zoo. You know, there's an old castle at Dudley Zoo, and the boss there said to me the other day, I want you to go round tonight and see that everything is all right. Well, you never know, do you? And I said, no, you never know. So I took my light, it wasn't quite dark, and I started off. Now, I'm the only one on duty tonight, so come along. There's nothing to be afraid of, is there? No. Well, what's the time? Oh, Wednesday night. What's that? You be quiet. You can't frighten me. After all, just because a place is very, very old, it doesn't mean to say that there are any of those... any of those... any of those sort of things about, does it? No. What's that? I know who you are. You're doing it on purpose, just to put the wind at me. Well, I don't care. This is a very nice old castle. This is lovely, comfortable old place. Go on, then, try and frighten me again. Go on, I dare you. Oh. Now, where are you? Come on, come on, come out, come out, wherever you are. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Perhaps you're out and should be in. Well, we'll try and find out. Shh. Are you in there? Oh, I'll catch you in a minute. I said, are you in there? You're just having me on, aren't you? Well, we'll just look up this tower because you might be up there. Are you there? Hmm? No, it's not up there. Ooh, can you see him? Can you? Oh, dear. Perhaps he'll stop now. Now, look, I promised the boss to see that everything was all right. So either come out and say that you're all right or stay in and be quiet. I can't go on looking for you all night, can I? I'll just try the west wing of the castle. Are you there? Hey? Oh, oh, dear. Don't worry. Everything's all right. We'd better see how things are in here. This is the place I'd better start at, first of all. Got the key? Yes. Right, then. Good evening, all. I hope you're all very comfortable in here. Are you? Here. Yeah. Francis. Yes, Burnley. It's him again. Who again? Oh, Keeper Morris. Hello, mate. How are you? Well, I'm all right, Burnley. How are you and Francis? All right. Where's Francis? Oh, he's upstairs having a bit of a doss down. I'll go and tell him to show a leg. Oh, well, don't wake him. Are you all right? Yeah, Francis is just coming down, but he won't come without his bed. Won't he? No, not this time of night. Always brings his bed with him. Oh, hello, Francis. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> well, I won't keep you chaps awake. I expect you could do with a bit of a nap. Well, I'm not particular. You won't be around again tonight, will you? No, not tonight. Well, night, night, then, old man. Well, night, night.
Mysterious, the secret world of Azure at night. Now, if someone said to you, elephant, what would you think of? Would you think of a zoo elephant carrying rides there? Or perhaps you would picture those elephants that we saw in pictures recently walking across the big African landscape, those vast ears going, pushing their way through the trees, getting down towards the river for a bathe at the close of the day, real wild elephants. I think everybody thinks of these things differently. But if you happen to be born in some part of India or in Burma, you'd think of something different again. You'd think of an animal that was really half tame and half wild at the same time. You'd think of the Indian timber elephant. Now, these work in parts of India and in the Burma highlands on teak plantations and timber felling camps. They were very nice, weren't they, those faithful, ponderous, slow elephants? Now, can you think of any other slow, ponderous animals? Have a bit of a think. Um, go on. You've got one in the garden? I thought you might have, yes, a tortoise. Well, we've all had tortoises, haven't we, for some time or another. But, you know, we get a lot of letters asking about the care of tortoises. Now, As you see, he has grown a little, but not very much. They're very slow growing in this country, I'm afraid. Yeah, he's a proper little buster, isn't he? And here's one of the same species. Yeah. About ten years old, so that's what he'll be like in about ten years' time. So there you are, and that's with very careful handling, isn't that's it? That's right. Now, um, you wouldn't advise trying to hatch out any tortoise eggs, would you, Jim, unless you're going to do it very seriously indeed. That's right. You, you must uh, get the eggs as soon as you possibly can after they're laid. Yeah. Get some fine sand and heat it to a temperature of about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, an inch layer, put the eggs on that, yeah. and then a half an inch layer on the top, and keep yeah. the sand slightly moist all the way through for about 12 weeks. Yeah, but that's a very difficult thing to do, and we really want to talk about the general sort of care of a tortoise. I mean, this time of the year, or a bit later on in the summer, it's all right in the garden, as long as you give it, what, Jim, lettuce leaves? Lettuce leaves, dandelion, yeah. uh, clover, turnip tops, um, most of the common green food. Yeah. Well, uh, that's not so bad, because the weather's warm and he's all right. Now, Jim? A rarely special spatfall. A spatfall simply means the little larvae of the cockles had settled themselves well into the sand in very big numbers and had grown up. Well, it takes three years for a cockle to reach maturity, and now this wonderful harvest of plump, juicy, three-year-old cockles are being gathered up to go to markets all over Britain this back-breaking task all over again. But it must be pleasant, rewarding work out here, out on the foreshore, out in the fresh air, listening to the curlews and the red shanks and watching the oyster catchers come and steal some of the harvest, leaving some of the cockles to grow because you must have it next year. But it's all unknowns. It's working very close to nature indeed. There can be few industries where man is so dependent on the strange vagaries of tide and foreshore.
Well, there you are. That looks a nice, leisurely occupation, doesn't it? But don't you believe it? It's very hard work. I've done it, and so has Keith. You haven't, oh, yes. you? It's yes. very hard work indeed, but it's worth it, I think. Well, now, that's all we've got time for for this week. Next week, we're going to meet Jonathan Kenworthy. Uh, he's a sculptor, and he's going to talk to Keith about animal movement, and he specialises this in his sculptures. Now, here's a very attractive one he's done of a little antelope, a dick dick, just scratching his ear. Very pretty and very delicate. So we'll be meeting him next week, and until then, from all of us here, bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.